I'm Jared Howe. And I'm Emma Lansiedel, and this is our final project, the Michelson Interferometer Application to the Refractive Index of Glass. The purpose of our experiment was to find the index of refraction of our sample using a Michelson Interferometer by changing the source wavelength. This is the derivation for the equation that drives our experiment. Starting with the regular Michelson Interferometer and the equation that is the optical path difference for it, you can set the distances D3 and D2 equal to one another and come up with a simpler equation for OPD here. Knowing that the OPD is also equal to the wavelength times the fringe number and that the phase is equal to 2 pi times the fringe number, you can come up with two values for the phase, subbing this OPD back in. Then you take the derivative of both of these, one with respect to the wavelength, one with respect to the fringe number, and come up with two equations that you can set equal to one another, subbing in that OPD back into one, and then rearranging everything, you can solve for n and get an equation for the index. Our derivation shows that we need to find the thickness of a sample, the average wavelength, the change in wavelength, and the change in fringe count to find n. We used a laser diode as our source, and by changing current, we allowed mode hopping to occur, and we analyzed this with an optical spectrum analyzer, which allowed us to find delta lambda and average lambda. The diagram shows how we coupled the light from the laser diode with the OSA so it could be red, and we changed the current. The peak shifted, as you can see from the images on the right. This table describes the peaks that were shown in the images in the previous slide. We expected a change in wavelength of less than a nanometer, and we expected an average wavelength of between 660 and 680 nanometers, and that is what we got with our results. Next, we needed to measure the thickness of the sample accurately, as well as determine that it was of high quality by doing surface and transmission tests. The ZO and XPZ interferometers were used to conduct surface quality tests. The sample was placed into the ZO, and if straight lines were found, that indicated a flat sample. In the XPZ, a computer-generated image was created, and if it was monochromatic, that indicated flatness. A transmission test was done with a zygo interferometer, and the monochromatic image indicated a direct transmission of the wavefront. Additionally, a micrometer was used to measure the thickness of the sample at different locations. As expected, the sample is very flat, but the ZO test yielded straight lines, and the XPZ test showed generally monochromatic surfaces. The variations on the XPZ test come from back reflections from the rear surface, which occurs due to their parallel sides. Additionally, one surface is less monochromatic, and the same surface had slightly curved lines in the Fizeau test, showing it was slightly less flat than the other surface. Also, the transmitted light through the sample was essentially the same in either direction and transmitted the wavefront really well. The micrometer measurements show a very slight wedge shape, but overall very parallel surfaces. The thickness was slightly greater than anticipated, but it is even throughout the whole sample. Overall, the sample is of very high quality and should not introduce significant errors into the experiment. Our final experiment was to use the laser diode in the Michelson interferometer, change its wavelength, and count the fringes that change in order to find delta F. The first condition of our experiment was to make D2 and D3 the same distance so that the OPD without the sample was exactly zero. This condition was approached by finding linear monochromatic fringes and was found within a few microns by getting white light fringes. The sample is introduced, which changes the OPD and causes circular fringes to occur. As current was changed, the circular fringes shifted, but not as we expected them. The sample we used was fused silica, which has an index of about 1.45. With all the other variables we've now found, we expected a fringe shift of about 11.5. Our fringe shift was a lot smaller than that, and so our index was also smaller. We think this error comes from the mode hopping behavior of the laser diode. Here you can see the fringes unresolved. They get bright, blend together, and shift in position. We believe many fringes pass during this period due to the discrete mode hopping of the laser diode, which is why our fringe count was so low. If we had a source with a continuous wavelength shift, we are confident we would be able to count all the passing fringes and our experiment would produce an accurate index.